Zimbabwe Mining Forum winds up today in Harare and the theme this year has been building a sustainable mining industry in Zimbabwe, prospects and challenges. The conference is a platform for mining companies and investors to seek deals and look for opportunities in the Zimbabwe mining industry. But a week ahead of the conference, the Fraser Institutes in Canada ranked Zimbabwe 69th out of 72 for its unfriendly mining policies. The only worst countries are Venezuela, Ecuador and the Philippines. Join me now with his take is Andrew Cranswick, the CEO of African Consolidated Resources. Andrew, thanks very much for coming in today. And on the same day that that Fraser report came out, of course, the High Court in Zimbabwe rescinded a judgment that's affirmed your rights to the Morangi Diamond Field. And this has been a long-term dispute for you. What does that say about security of tenure in Zimbabwe for foreign investors? It is a concern. Uh, we can't hide the fact that uh, well, there is an issue with the, the tenure on that particular field. Uh, rich alluvial diamond deposits, of which this is an extraordinarily rich deposit, have a history of dispute and, and ownership dispute in Africa. And uh, we, we need to follow the procedures. We are following the procedures. It was very irregular for a high court to rehear its own judgment. And this is now subject to an appeal in the Supreme Court again, which has the effect of suspending that rescission. So the rescission is not in force at the moment. Uh, and But in terms of tenure in Zimbabwe, it is the only issue we've had over tenure. Uh, and by and large, Zimbabwe's mining law is very strong, case law and the statute law. So it's a question of application of the law, law and enforcement of the law that is, is lacking. But there's a lot of room for improvement on that side. But the, 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 the infrastructure and the framework for, for law is there. So we, we're very, very hopeful for the future. Of course, I know that Zimbabwe is the main jurisdiction for your company. How do you think it compares with other jurisdictions, though? Do you think the Fraser reports that's a, it's from a Canadian independent think tank, do you think it was out of line, perhaps, as ranking Zimbabwe so poorly? Well, my understanding of the Fraser report is it, it, is it gauges opinions from mining executives worldwide. So that is the, the net average opinion of, of, of risk in Zimbabwe versus the rest of the world. And what I repeatedly say at all of these investment fairs where I frequently promote investment in Zimbabwe, not just in the mining sector, is that Zimbabwe needs to compete with the rest of the world. And that perception is very important. We need to improve that perception. The reality, I don't think, is nearly as bad as that perception, which is where we believe we have uh, tapped the arbitrage of real risk versus perceived risk. But the Fraser Institute will not change its opinion uh, if the mining investment community does not change its opinion. So Zimbabwe has to market itself to the investment community. And of course, the, the Zimbabwe Mining Forum is one of those forums where you can market yourself. Do you think they're, they're, they're doing the, the right job here? It's definitely uh, a step in the right direction. Trade fairs in any sector are obviously a good thing to, to promote. However, some of the mixed messages coming from the mixed government, which we have in Zimbabwe, are confusing the investment sector. So uh, a consistent and clear and honest policy needs to be promoted and enforced. Well, you talked about the risks, but how about the risks versus the returns? Are the returns worth the risks that you might encounter in Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe can't be ignored forever as a mineral resource destination. And certainly there are majors there, Anglo Platts, uh, Impala Platts, and, uh, and others are there. And we are, we, we took the view six years ago to, to enter Zimbabwe and to explore for, for minerals that we thought were there and we believe and we've been very successful and by getting in before everyone else, by having the first mover advantage, we've succeeded. There was very little com competition but now everyone is looking. There's seven flights a day to Harare and they all fall. Uh, and do you think that first mover advantage is going to pay off for you in the longer term? Tell us about some of your other operations because of course we touched on Morangi, that still uh, is, is out, out for the moment. Uh, gold though, you, you are looking for gold exploration uh, rights in, in Zimbabwe. Where would you expect to get any gold out of the ground there? We are hopeful to go into production on a, on a, a small to medium scale in our first project, our most mature project which is the Peerless in Pixton. Uh, and we have signed MOUs with regards to that and announced it to the stock exchange. <coughs> and uh, we are hopeful to be seeing some first phase production out of that next year. And of course our initial story was multi-mineral, it wasn't diamonds, it was, it was multi-mineral, so it's gold, it's nickel. We've, ha we've had some really good finds in rock phosphate that, 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 that bode well for the future of Zimbabwe and food production in Africa and the world. So it's a big story and, and, and we think we're going to get value eventually. The, the market doesn't recognize our value because of the significant discount applied to anything to do with Zimbabwe. But that will change in time.
How about the clarity of regulation? Um, you, you mentioned that you do need to have a clear environment for companies operating there. We have the indigenization law which has come in. Of course, that's still not quite clear as well, the, the thresholds and when they would need to be implemented. How does that affect you? We watch it with interest. We are a subscriber to the concept of indigenization. Uh, I'm a Zimbabwean citizen. I'm a fourth generation Zimbabwean. And uh, I, I believe in, in the people of Zimbabwe benefiting from its own assets. So we're very pro it, and, 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 and we've been somewhat proactive in, in preparing ourselves for it. As we, we have announced, uh, we are looking very seriously at a Zimbabwe Stock Exchange listing. So it'll be a secondary listing for us, and it'll be the vehicle where uh, we actually I implement what is required in indigenization. Unfortunately, the indigenization law is not a complete law. It's very, there are a lot of technical gaps in it. And there's a lot of mixed messages coming out of the government about what the end form will take, what the minimum thresholds will be, what the maximum thresholds will be, what credits one gets for infrastructure and uh, community development. So all of that's got to be bedded down before investors feel secure. Has dollarization of the economy helped on that front? Extraordinarily so. Dollarization and gold deregulation are probably the two most important things for the mining sector that have happened in the last year. I mean, for the first time in 120 years, you can sell your gold freely in Zimbabwe. And your costing and your, your, your accounting is now fully dollarized. Its predictability is back. Uh, and um, it's, it's, it's very easy to operate now in, in a practical sense compared to where it was with the Zimbabwe dollar a few years back. Even if you don't have first mover advantage, what are the opportunities for new investors going into Zimbabwe? Well, there's still a huge reservoir of untapped minerals there. And Considering that the database and knowledge base up till about 1982-83 was very modern and very up to, uh, very, um, up to date, the ability to digitize all that information and, and, and apply modern exploration technology is enormous. And yes, we've, we've had some very successful discoveries in five different mineral classes, but by no means have we exhausted the whole country. We've scratched the surface. So there's huge opportunity for exploration companies. And you don't think security of tenure should be the, a primary focus for investors going into that country? Well, well of course it is. It, it, it's a focus of uh, any country, including Australia or Canada. I mean, there are, there, there's a capacity to change a law or to, to abuse a law in any country. And transparency of governance and, and Im implementation of the law is, is a concern. But it's a, it's a, it's a risk we, we try to understand and quantify, as mu anyone must in any country.